And here we are, back on the title screen, to start another video of Tales of Magiel. So, I just beat the uh, game recently with the higher Norfil, and that's my second win. I'm probably going to have a third win very soon, but um, with the video you're going to be seeing, we're going to actually start pushing into um, a couple of races I've yet to uh, really delve into, the undead races. I figured for the um, first character I go with would be Ghoul Necromancer, so... Go with Ghoul and Necromancer. So Ghouls are um, dumb, resilient, rotting, undead creatures. They make good fighters. They have access to special cool talents and a wide range of undead abilities. Uh, and these um, abilities include great poison resistance, bleeding immunity, stun resistance, and fear immunity. And they have special cool talents like Ghoulish Leap, Nah, Wretch, and the rotting bones of Ghouls also force them to act more slowly. So um, basically, strength and uh, penalty wise, they. Um, the ghoul is probably like the strongest of the races. They basically have, uh, as you can see, stat modifiers, plus three strength, plus one dex, plus five con, and then lower willpower and cunning. But, um, and of course they have more life. But they have a massive, massive penalty in the f form of the fact they only move at 20% less speed. So they only move at 8% speed a at any given time, which um, makes the ghoul kind of difficult if you don't understand it. They can be very strong if you're very accustomed to, like, you know, playing or moves like I am, but they might be difficult for someone who's more willy-nilly, not really playing ahead. For this one, we'll go with Davian. Well, let's call him Dead Rise. And I'm going to be changing the difficulty back to Roguelike. I've been doing Adventure Mode for... Um, adventure uh, permadeath mode for quite a while now. I figured I'd jump back into one one character, one death type of idea and oh, let's get, to, get this underway. So, we start. And um, as you can see, we have um, a bunch of undead type talents and then we have the ghoul talents over here. We have the ability to get phase door if we want to, but I don't think we'll worry too much about phase door. Um, if uh, you look at I'll actually have phase door down here I believe so that's why I'm skipping phase door we have ghoul which basically improves your ghoulish ball increasing your strength and constitution to five by next and also your body becomes incredibly resistant to damage and you can never take a blow that deals more in okay so we actually have um, an ability to reduce overall damage to ourselves so we can't take you know more than say just this will probably lead to about 50% um, reduction of you know on blows that would be very powerful imagine for for example if um, I go up against like the uh, the un not the undead the orc wormer uh, no not wormer it's, it's a berserker dragon slayer type of guy you find in um, Daikara when you come back for like the alternate uh, guardian guy it when he'll say him like man nor for like massive damage this would probably help reduce it quite a bit so That'll be good to have. We also have this over here, Arcane Eye. Um, I'm actually not sure I want Arcane Eye. Nope, by the way, I don't have any armor training, and um, the Ghoul Towns here are on the bottom instead of on the top, like all the other races. Hmm. I may want to get this cunning survival stuff over here. I don't think I want to get Arcane Eye at the start, but it could be useful, but not just, you know, right away. We'll get rid of that. And we'll drop that. We'll drop in Face Door. Why not? I'll have two Face Door. No, I won't. I'll have one. We'll just put it in uh, Heightened Senses. So you notice small things um, do you, um, that others do not notice, allowing you to see creatures in four radius, even have a silent radius. So let's. Oh, I need quote 1220 for that. Okay, so that's easy enough to pick up. One, two, three. And I'll have to get a little bit more cunning, but I'll be able to get that later. I guess we will get phase door. Yoink. All right, so over here in the class points, I just spent um, a little bit on cunning, but uh, I don't think any of my uh, stuff uses cunning. It's all magic. All this stuff requires magic to unlock. Literally everything in the Necromancer tree is going to be match related. The stuff over here is where I'm going to use the other stats like Cunning, 
That'll be magic, magic, nothing. So this is the only thing that requires cunning, I guess. It's not a bad thing to pick this up, though. Being able to detect traps for sure is going to be not very beneficial. What I really want to get over here is piercing sight. So... I'll get that later. Okay, what am I going to get over here? So basically, Nickermancers, they, um... They aren't really made very well to, at this point in time, apparently. Um, the minions that Nickermancers can summon can not exactly be as beneficial as you may want them to be. And they actually play a lot more like a mage than you might expect them to. Create minions. So, fire powerful under the energies for your ne necronic aura. For um, each recent death that happens inside your aura, you will um, raise an under minion up to one to three minions. These minions will be raised with a corn that extends to the edge of your necronic aura. So, minions is your level minus five so it'd be I guess negative two because I'm like low level each minion has a chance to be trappy and then it gets better I guess over time this will probably be worth picking up the most um, create minions right at the start even though they, they don't they play like a mason you'll be using invoke darkness quite a bit they're still something you want to make use of a lot of people left from death blurs to you and you can't die. Okay, so this is why Nicomancers never die instantly. They have this ability here. Cool. Good to know. Conjure a bowl of coal that moves towards your target and explodes in a chilly circle of death. I know that's powerful. Crush to consume some of your captured souls, healing you for life and restoring mana. So that's like a mana uh, thing that I can get do right there. I think what we'll have to get though. Hey look, there's some Penny Doom. The target's Doom draws near, its healing factor is reduced to 100% and will take 82% of its remaining life um, from or is lower or 10 turns as arcane damage. Interesting. I think we're gonna pick up um, this here though. We'll take up Invoke Darkness 2, I guess. I may want to get this down here, Chill of the Tomb, uh, soon, but we'll pick up this for now. Once I get this up to free, it becomes a beam at level 5. Your Nightfall spells won't hurt my minions anymore, so... Obviously, this will be very beneficial when I use, like, my ghouls and all that, or whatever. Alright, so, welcome to Tome. You died ages ago, but that did not stop you. You were raised as an undead ghoul. Your Necromancer Master has plans for you, but something's wrong. You seem to have kept your free will. Get rid of this evil mage and try to find a place in the world. You have been raised in a place called the Blade Scar in the northern border of the Shalorn Lands. Escape this for forsaken pit and try your luck in old threatened places. So, before you stands a human clothed in black robes. He seems to be ignoring you. You stand inside some kind of summoning circle which prevents you from moving. Oh yes, yes, one more for my collection, my collection. Yes, a powerful one indeed. A powerful tool against my enemies. Yes, yes, they all hate me. But I will show them that power. I will show them, show them. I'm not a tool, release me. You can't talk. You can't talk. You are a slave, a tool. You're mine. Be quiet. As his mind drifts off, you know, as a part of something circles fading, you can probably escape. Attack! Alright. Let's get on to this. Hello, master. Let's see, we have down here Necroc Aura, Mr. Necroc Aura, sustained. Sting your under minions in a race of two. Minions outside the race will lose life per turn. Any creature you are, you or your minions kill within your aura will be absorbed as a soul. You can use this race minions. Breaks from your ghouls will also heal you even if you're not dead. Interesting. And then there's all this other stuff. Apparently this is sustain right here. Blur of mortality. Uh, let's just, um, get on with killing this guy, though. First... Ow, he really hurts when he wants to hurt. It's worth knowing that, um, you start off with shooting rooms undead, but, uh, you don't have, like, abilities and fusions on this, like, type of character, so it's actually gonna be kind of a tricky thing. I think I want to put on this, just in case. And I'll put on this, too. Hey, I made a skeleton!
He falls to his knees. Please spare me. I am pitiful. I will not stop you. Let me leave. No. But, but, you were my, you, you need me. What do you think you will do on your surface? Everything will meet, will try to destroy you. You're strong, but you cannot resist them all. So what do you propose? I can give you a cloak that will conceal your true nature. With, with it, all people will see when they look at you as a normal average human. You can go about your business, please. Thanks for your information. Now you will, you may die. Kill him. Ah, you are alone. You will be destroyed. And we got the cloak of deception from him. So it's worth knowing what he says is very true. Um, if you go up into the surface world, everyone's going to hate you because you're undead. This uh, cloak of deception though, will let you uh, basically um, avoid that sort of like problem. First, we'll put this on. So here's the cloak of deception. It basically gives me five physical power, spell power, mind power. And you want to keep this at all times, so actually we'll take this off. I'm going to tag this. So, do not destroy. And you should probably tag that yourself if you're playing a ghoul type character or whatever. I'm to the chest at once. Also done automatically when you change level, costing zero power, blah blah blah. Interesting. They, I guess he made the transform, transmogrification chest to uh, its own item. Alright, let's heal up. So, to heal up, basically you have to do it the natural way. And it looks like this is a soul meter over here. So, represents the raw material for creating undead minions. It increases each time you or your minions kill something that is inside the aura radius. Interesting. I guess you can have up to 10 souls stored at any time. I actually don't have a whole lot of mana on this character, but... It doesn't look like I'm going to have too much mana worries, so it doesn't really matter too much. So global speed is reduced there. Um, we basically have, as you can see, high resi resistance to everything just because I'm ghoul. That's the nice thing about ghouls. Even though they uh, are slow, they make up for it with their resistances and such. All right, well, let's get to this. Looks like the uh, degenerate warrior fell on me. Gonna leave this stuff for a little bit. Cool. Okay, let's just get this going. Looks like I'm up to eight souls. And I think those worms, each time they uh, turn into a new mob on me, they actually gave me more uh, minions to be used. Okay, we got this guy over here. We're gonna drop. Looks like my my necroc aura is only so big, Sally. Um, I'm gonna hit you with that. I'll move away. Hello, I didn't want want you to be here. Do this. And hey, look, we got a couple ghouls and a skeleton warrior now. So, I have a little bit of minions to help me out. I wonder if I can tell them to attack or anything. Nope, doesn't seem to be. I can do that. So I have a ghoul there. He'll uh, start helping, hopefully. So really, if they... Um, if they fall anywhere out my, my radius, these guys will die. And it doesn't look good to heal up, Sally Eater. It's worth knowing, I think that you can kill these guys. Sometimes they'll give you like little, um, Master, no, why? Why did you kill me? Type of phrases for you. Um, why not? We'll put on some armor. Because I'm a caster, I'm actually not really interested in putting on heavy armor. I actually want to use robes, but... At the same time, I don't really care too much, because as a necromancer, it's not really, um... You know, something I really care about. I 
I should probably get closer to these guys so I can get the souls from them. There's the trollish poem. Closer. Zap. Whoopsie. As you can see here, if I run away from this guy, each like, you know, four or five moves, he'll get a free hit on me. Ah, uh, why not? We'll do this. Yoink! Hey, I got an Arbor Skeleton! Nope for the Necromancer. My masterpiece walks! It is glorious, beautiful! While it remains unfinished, it is finished enough to serve in its purpose of protecting my lair. No would-be hero will be able to defeat it, and once it is complete, it will be uh, not invulnerable. Now, all that remains is to animate my newest minion and bend to my will. Then they'll see. They'll all see. What can possibly stop me from now, I ask? What? Well, I guess the new minion could stop you. Ooh, these guys got injured a little bit. Got the Spectral Blade. Um, I guess we might want to keep this. For, like, the, um, you know who guy. The guy who, uh, is, takes arcane items. So these guys, my skeletons, they're level 1, I guess, because they can't go lower than level 1. Ow, ow, ow. I have to remember I can't believe very well. You're dead? Hey, a skeleton! So yeah, if they kill stuff or I kill stuff, it's beneficial for my minion count. You know, I find it funny that those, like, minions, they're dying, even though I'm slower than them. I think they could keep up. Alright, well, there's the first level out of the way. By the way, this is the uh, star for the for the undead, the Blade Ruins. So, this is probably your first time seeing this if you've uh, been a frequent watching my channel. A note for the Necromancer. The Cloak of Deception is complete. Truly my finest work. Not counting my project, of course. It allows my minions to walk amongst the living without arising their suspicion at all. Already I have taken a stroll to a nearby town alongside a ghoulish thrall wrapped in a cloak. Ha! The fools didn't even bat an eyelid. With this item, acquisition of components for my project shall be all the more simple. As you can see, this, uh, the notes from this dungeon are more or less helpful to help you out with being uh, undead, I guess. Hey, Master Archer! Hello. Hello, Master Archer. And we'll put this on... It's worth noting, by the way, I just want to point this out. Um, undead, they can't never ever be anti-magic. They can't join the anti-magic faction because they're dead. They're arcane in nature. Near slowly dying. All right, he's going to be dangerous. The um, skeletal war is really your dangerous nuisance in this uh, dungeon. But usually it's not something I, I'm going to worry about the skeletons because I know how to deal with them. Fate smiles upon me. What did I come across today but a body of an unfortunate necromancer? Unfortunate indeed, but rather unfortunate for me. The body displays next to no dis decomposition. It shall be perfect. With this new minion, the cloak of deception, the completion of my project is all but assured. I must prepare for the ritual. My dark manjara shall soon be my new member. So I guess I'm the unfortunate necromancer. Boink. Alright, so we leveled up. Um, I could go for cunning, but you know what? We're probably more interested in magic up, so... Let's get our magic up this for now and get this stuff going. 
gets us up to free. I'm gonna basically max this out and then possibly I'll start worrying about the other stuff down here. Hey look, there's rigor mortis. How many times have that um, has that caused me problems? Let's get, um, I guess we'll start investing in Ghoul. It's worth knowing that the Undead Talents are probably your most powerful um, race talents in any of this um, game. Unlike like the other races, they're actually got you know, good talents all throughout, so you're probably gonna have like five, 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 regardless of your class for the Undead Talents. The Ghoul Talents are more, more or so just like to sort of help it keep alive, I guess, over the duration of it being slow, but That's just help for, for any, you know, class that you use, probably. Boink. 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 My, be my beam of darkness is getting stronger and stronger. Do I have to walk through that guy? Boom! Okay, he's up close to me. But he's dead now. Doink. Doink. You cannot survive my darkness. Hmm. Um, so much like other places, you have to remember that... Um, there's a possibility you'll find hidden areas. The only bad thing about the Blade Ruins is that I think it's a one-time area. Once you go out of this dungeon, you basically can't get back in. So I don't, if I don't have anything to dig this out, which I don't, I can't actually get over to here. I have to find a pickaxe or else I can't visit that area. Which is not really a terrible thing. But it's still terrible, I guess. You want experience for the final boss. So we're here. All right, I think I went to the wrong place. So we're on the first level of the Blood Ruins now. And I'm looking for the boss. Hello boss, half-finished bone giant. A towering creature made from the bones of hundreds of dead bodies it is covered by an unholy era. This specimen looks like it was hastily assembled and it's not really complete yet. The only bad thing though is that I can still kick my ass. So, let's get my ass kicked, shall we? First though, let's try and get some minions up. I got two archers, that's not terrible, but could be better. Um, I think we're going to step that way. Ow, it threw its bones at me. Yes, it has the ability to throw bones at you. Go this way. Hey, look, it does damage shield, why not? Um... Let's invoke the darkness on. I'll try and kill through it a little bit. And let's uh, invoke my face door ruin. I know it's going to you know chase me, so... Hit with that. I have to really watch my health, because... Um, well, what can I say about this guy? He is going to... Uh, basically take a while, and he's going to be able to will me down. And I don't have the ability to heal myself in the fight, so... Gotta be careful of it. That was not what I want to happen right here. Uh, let's put... What I can. That'll hold him off, hopefully. At least I can beam all that, so that's good. All right, you came out and said hi. I'm gonna put this on now. He's probably gonna hit me with a rock in a moment. And I'm going to hit him with that. Notice how that killed my minion. But uh, it still got through him. And I'm actually out of mana at this point. I don't wanna be on mana. Let's mana surge. And kill that. I think we'll use our ruin here. I, will hope, I was hoping we get a little bit far away, but whatever. Zap you again. He hits me for... 22 damage at least. He's gonna hurt. But whatever, let's just 
use the regular phase door. And God damn it, there's so many bunnies and stuff. Kill those. I should stop using my Nikonic, uh beam there, but whatever. Put this on, zap. Hopefully the guy doesn't appear anytime soon. Zap you. Hit something, which is good. Apparently my sustains got turned off, which is not good. Back up. Back up. All right, let's see if I can get a few hits in here. Well, I got a few, that's good, I guess. Zap those guys. Kill those guys, please. Oh, you came in and said hello. There's the bone giant again. Now you'll notice that he uh, doesn't regain his health. So that's like his weakness in this. Um, let's just zap through him. He does have damage shield though, so uh, he is very resistant to damage at least. All right, let's go. Zap you again. He's still got that damn bone shield on. I probably don't won't be able to kill him with the bone shield. Zap away this way. Put the mana surge going. Note that you don't have to kill the boss, by the way. I just, you know, I'm trying because whatever. Um, you can go chase after him. Ow. Kill him. He's down there still. You know what? Let's just try and tear through him. Boink. That gets a hit on him. Boink. Another hit on him. We'll put on the shield now because he's probably going to hit me with a rock. And there we go. The half finished bone giant has finished. So you really want to make use of uh, phase door to sort of save yourself in this sort of um, situation. It's the one really you know unique situation where phase door is going to be useful to you. Really useful. I should probably move this over now. Move this stuff like this or. Yeah, I'll move that there. Alright. So, level up. Let's see here. I want to increase my magic, obviously, a little bit. I have Impending Doom now. Though I don't really need to use it, I don't think. Whoa, look at the mana cost in that thing. 80 mana cost to uh, use it. It doesn't seem to go down with uh, increased um, skill pointage. That's disgusting. Uh, circle of Death. Dark fumes erupt in the ground. Any creature caught in a circle will be, uh, be received Bane of Confusion or Bane of Blindness. That's a nice um, thing, honestly. I've suffered from it quite a bit. Or Master, your Dark Power Raids for as you grow stronger increases your rates of your Necronic Aura by two, 1 and reduces the Decay Rate of your minions outside the Aura by 1%. I can get that by 1, I guess. Blah, blah. We'll look at other sort of stuff when I get to it. Um, for now, let's just uh, keep maxing this out. We have teleport now. Hooray! And I've ghoulish leap. Hooray!
actually very, very, very flexible when it comes to um, movement. They're actually the most flexible, I think, of erasers because they have the uh, Ghoulish Leap here. They're, you know, they're overall slow, but that just means they're they're slow. It just means, but the ability like the Ghoulish Leap here is going to make it very flexible in moving around. Okay, we'll drop all this stuff over here. Um, I'll dump the. Hey, we got Skeleton Mage. Hi, Skeleton Mage. Hey, look, the two from the mouth. That'll be very useful for digging out the secret. All right, heal up. Let's actually do that. We're going to go downstairs. Now, do these guys follow me downstairs? And I should probably put this on. I don't really care for this is other stuff, I don't think. They do follow me downstairs, hooray! So you can actually take onion minions with you, cool. That'll be very beneficial. Okay, we wanna go up here and I wanna start digging, so. Alt zero is my uh, dig key still. Alt zero. And it looks like we had a rat up here, and that's it. So that's the only thing we were missing a rat and um, a little bit of space to explore. Uh, I don't really care about this belt. All right, let's time to explore, I guess, or we went the wrong way. Hello. Yoink. Hooray, another Skeleton Mage. Um, now, you want to be really careful of Skeleton Mages. Apparently, they do hurt you, but there is apparently something that lets you reduce their damage. Is it Dark Empathy? You share your powers with your minions, granting them 82% of your resistance to the saves. In addition, all damage done by your minions is, is to you reduced by 20%. So basically, this is what you really need to reduce their damage. But until you have that, you don't have that ability to, you know, reduce their damage. So be careful. Um, he killed it with his flame. And killed that with um, Mana Frost. But yeah, he's obviously firing like mad. What, uh, anything can hit. I just realized something, but I had a gas too. Uh, you're just a giant white mouse or two. I want to be really careful in this position because he can shoot me in the back. Good, he managed to shoot that without hitting me. No friend of the commander. Work on my glorious project has been delayed. This displeases me. The fools from the nearby village are starting to suspect my presence and have begun guarding the graveyards and cemeteries closely. Whatever meager remains I can steal away are often too rod or insubstantially used for my project. So I have no but choice but to use them as subpar means instead. Perhaps they will sow enough conflict in Discord so that new fresh remains will become available. Bunny! Let's actually back up. Zap like this. Oh, the bunny didn't die. Now it's dead now. So many mice, so many skeletons. And there we are, we're done with the um, initial first dungeon here. Um, I'll put this on. 
So honestly, I need armor training, I guess, to use this armor stuff, though it could be noted I don't have to get the armor training. It might be better just to, you know, ignore so I can benefit from my mana casting, though it's not really a big issue in my mana, is it? I only had to use my mana rune like once. This gives me resistance to fire, cold, and gives me mental save and spot power. This is just mental save and spell power. I don't really care then. Alright, well, let's just get going. And on to the main world of Magiel. So, indeed, we basically don't have the Blade Runes here anymore. So, you can't go back into it once you escape. But anyhow, we're now basically out of the, um, the area. Hey look, there's the Ruined Dungeon. And there's the Shalorn stuff. So, pretty much this uh, concludes the first, more or less, episode for the uh, Ghoul. I'll give you your item. And... All right, well, basically, um, that's done. That's all I really need to do. And uh, next time, we'll start exploring the first two dungeons. So take care for now.